Hey guys, it's Song here. So today I decided to do a video introducing or talk about all kinds of commonly seen medium in our arts and craft world because I have gotten so many questions over the years on uh, what each medium is about and how do you use each medium. So I think I, sh I should just make a video that just talk about all of them or at least the commonly used ones so that I give you a overall idea on what you can do with it. So let's get started. First of all, I want to talk to you about gesso. So pretty much you use it to prep your surface, especially if you use um, acrylic paints or water medium. These are really helpful, but you have to pay attention to the properties of your glimmer mist because some glimmer mist will kind of resist on gesso surface. So um, yeah, you have to play with it and know what you do. But it really helps you to provide a, a tooth and a um, protective layer on top of your paper project so that when you use your water-based medium, it doesn't kind of break apart your paper that easily. And here I have different types. So this is the Liquitex basic white gesso. Okay, so this is very, very traditional. And here is the clear gesso. So of course it's clear color and this is white color. So it depends on what you like. They work exactly the same. And this is the heavy gesso, so it's heavier than your regular gesso, and it gives you more dimension. And this is the 13 Arts gesso. This is quite different from all the other ones. These are from Prima, this one's from Liquitex. So this is very, very, very heavy, and you can use it as a modeling paste directly. And I think this one um, actually doesn't provide as much of a tooth. You can touch the finished surface. This one's more of a sleek surface, but it is very, very useful. It's thick and it's a creamy, very, very opaque. So yeah, you can try different types of medium, different types of gesso, just depends on what you like and um, what kind of different properties that you're looking for. So here's my heavy gel collection. I used to have a Liquitex heavy gel, but I used all of it. These two from Prima, these two from Golden. Now this one says regular gel golden bottle, but it is heavy enough that I consider it as a heavy gel. So here's what you can do with them. You can first tint them with any color that you like and they will become that color of modeling paste for you. And the second properties they have is that they are very, very water resistant. So after they dried and you apply them on top of your surface, they'll resist any water medium that you put on top of them. So it gives you a really cool effect. So if you apply them through a stencil and then apply some glimmer mist on top, it will look very, very cool. And the third use for them is that um, you can use them to uh, make your fluid acrylic paint heavier so they can really add the body to your thin paints that you want to make a thicker one so that you don't have to acquire two different um, bottles of the same paint but just with a different body hope I'm making sense and all kinds of gels have different finishes they have matte finish have a gloss finish some some companies offer satin finish and I always like to have both gloss and matte because the matte is perfect for act like a glue. It glues everything like instantly and it dries actually pretty fast. The gloss gel is perfect for mixing with um, your mica powder and makes your own very shiny glimmer modeling paste. So that's the 3D, 3D gels or heavy gels and then we'll move on to the next product. So here are the regular type of gel medium that are available out there and this one's from Prima, this one from 13 Arts, this is from Golden. And they are very much the same as the heavy gel, but in a very, very more liquidy consistency. So they will not provide you with a thick texture. So if you want to use them as texture paste, it's not that possible. But what they can do is first, act like a glue. Second, they resist water. So you can still apply patterns through stencil or on your own. And then apply water, on, water medium on top to create that beautiful effect. And three is that they can thin down your heavy body paint because they are really, really thin consistency. If you have heavy body paint and you want to make them into a fluid acrylic, more close to fluid acrylics, you can use these kind of regular watery gel medium to do so. And of course, they have gloss finish, matte finish. And again, I always have both just so, you know, I have a um, variations to play with.
So yeah, that's the regular soft gel and I'll move on to the next medium. Okay, so here is the biggest um, collection here and this is all what I consider modeling paste. So let's talk about the regular ones first. I have these really regular modeling paste in this one and if you don't have the pre-modeling and um, I also have a Liquitex modeling paste, it's the same. They're both very traditional type. And um, when you buy some Prima texture paste, you'll see them come in so many different types and you just don't know what they are. So when you see the modeling paste like this, this is a traditional type, okay? And when you see light paste, this is very different. So it is not your regular modeling paste. It dries semi-transparent, so it does not provide a white finish. But what's awesome about this light paste is that you can tint it to any color you want without it changing to a pastel color like your mo regular modeling paste would do because it's white color and it will change your color to a pastel color. Okay, so that's the difference between these two. And the Prima also offers some other type of texture paste. Now when you see texture paste here, that means there are two different types for now. Um, I don't know what else they're gonna come up later, but right now they have two different types, okay? That's not this four, this is two. <laughs> two different types. And one is the one that has sandy grits in there. And um, you will see the name if it doesn't have a crackle. If it doesn't have a crackle, it means they have sandy grits in there. And when you apply it, you will feel that grits and when it dries, it gives you an amazing gritty texture on top of the project and it's very very awesome. Uh, of course this is crackle paste like the name it says it crackles, it has many different colors. So does the Sandy Grits one, it has many different colors. And there's a similar product to this uh, Sandy Grits texture paste. Like the Inklings textures, I really love those textures. They come in very di many different colors and they are very glimmery. Okay, so they don't have the matte finish, they have a really glimmery finish, which is very pretty. And this is the Golden's um, Pumice Gel. What they are is they have those really fine um, grits, stony grits, I don't know what's in there, but it's pretty much acting the same. So at, after it dries, it will give you that really nice and um, gritty texture on top of paper. And most of the times, so these type of things, uh, grits are in clear gel medium. So when it dries, the gel medium will dry clear and it will leave you with that only grits. And you can make this on your own, definitely, by mixing your heavy gel medium with sand or a really fine stone or your uh, micro beads or your glitter, whichever you want. So if you want to mix your own, by all means, go ahead. So these two are very different as well. This is the Shimmers Dazzlers and there's a very similar one. It's called Creative Medium. So what they are is they're very glimmery modeling paste. Hope you can see it. See how shiny they are. So after they dry, they will give, give you that very pearly and metallic finish which is very very gorgeous if you like them. And um, both shimmers and creative medium has many different colors, okay? The shimmers has vibrant colors ones and creative medium has those iridescent color ones. And this is the golden fiber paste. This is also the little fly unicorn. What this is is that um, when you apply it, I know many people have not used this one yet. You can see after it dries, and you can peel off of your um, craft mat and it feels like a handmade paper and it absorbs all kinds of medium super super well especially water-based medium and it also gives you awesome paper looking texture so this is really really cool for you to play with and to use as a texture paste and also to use as a ground for your for your water medium and here is another one I want to talk about this is the 13 Earths modeling paste. This is quite different from your traditional one. So when you buy in the um, 13 hours modeling paste, keep in mind that it's not your traditional one. It does dry white though. You can see how jelly it looks. I don't think you can see on camera, but it is more a gel type of texture paste rather than this really um, heavy gesso looking type of texture paste. I hope I'm making sense to you here, but after this dries, it will resist water more than to regular modeling paste will do. So that's the main difference between a 13 hours one and a regular type. So 
Here are all the texture products that you can find in market and of course I have there are a lot more that I don't have so do your own research and see what you like and buy the ones that you want. So that's it. I really hope you like this short video and hopefully you find this video helpful enough for you to start deciding which type of media you like and how you're going to use them. And if you have any questions, please just leave, leave it in the comment area underneath this video, no matter what channel you're watching it on, either on Fly Unicorn or on my, on my channel, and I will answer all of your questions. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later in my next video. Bye! Mwah.